Starting out right off the bat, um, I have a fun new little toy right here. Um, this is a bone needle that I picked up in the summertime during an event. Um, and this is the first time I get to use it today, uh, trying it out on this nice thick wool. I'm just doing some basic uh, running stitches. It's not going to be like a continuous one just because of the way that this is set up. But stitching with this needle is very nice. Like it just gripped everything in a nice, like, right, perfect way. Um, but right now, what I'm sewing together here is the side gores. I think Godet, Godets. I'm just going to continue calling them gores because they go, they are inserted in the side for you here. I'm, After sewing them to the marked position, the seams are then felled down. Uh, I do this right before I add all my pieces together, just so I have less to do at the end. I hate felling seams. The needle isn't the best for this uh, action though. I find that maybe a metal needle would because it could pick up some of the finer uh, wefts. Now that the seams are taken care of, I am now going to mark out the measurements for the pleats that I'm going to put in. Um, I marked out every centimeter, but I'm really doing every second centimeter. For some reason, whenever I marked out like the two centimeter gap, it just didn't mathematically work. So I'm just going to do this because that worked. Once the pleats were planned out, I just gave them a quick backstitch just to hold it all together.
this should have been done before I put the pleating in, but I'm marking out a section that fits this entire gore and then also as well as five centimeters wide as that's how these are inserted it rather than like a triangle shape that kind of separates like the skirt it's like a weird little thing i don't know how to explain it but it's cool After that, I'm just marking out where the neck hole is going to go. It's very straightforward if you have a already pre-made neck hole pattern, which I do. Um, but this one has a center slit, so what I did is I followed the shoulder line to create the side slit. Um, and from there, I just made sure everything was lined up. And I marked that out, so that was the easiest way to move it and quite the most intuitive thing. Um, if I didn't explain that well, you'll see what I did visually here in just like a second.
Um, I just wanted to do a little update because I was doing some work off camera, just like inserting the first sleeve and finishing its edges and everything. Got to the seam. This is the second side. And, um, I broke my bone needle. Totally not wanting to cry right now because this is the second day I was using it. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've only used it on this one project, so great, but, but, uh, yeah, so, um, I'm going to switch back to what I would normally use is this metal needle, it's like a thick boy, um, but, yep, so, no more fun bone needle sewing. <sighs> After taking a very long cry break and then moving on with my project, I am now ready to insert the cores of the uh, thing now. Um, I finished the sleeves off camera just because like, it's a, already a basic thing how to do Norse slash early medieval sleeves. Here I'm just lining up and making sure everything's good and ready to pin to sew it in. Since this has more of a square build, I started out right across the top, did back stitching there because that would be a point under pressure, and then from there I did up the sides. Okay, so excuse the janky setup, but I have the tunic on. Um, I've just finished putting in both of the side gores, and it's really interesting. I have it belted with the belt I normally wear, but I'll take that off just for the show off. So I made it, I did make it quite like a bit oversized because this is like wool and you just kind of want air pockets to warm up because um, you know, like winter. Um, the reason why I haven't really mentioned anything about the sleeves, because, you know, they're not, they're like, they're just regular sleeves. Um, I think I may have made the cores just a tad too big for this one. Um, I have just like regular size cores. I, I prefer like more of the larger cores, but I think for this one. Um, lots of crumpling here because I did like the really long sleeves. I, I just really like that long sleeve effect, but if you wear them normally, um, yeah, um, these are, this isn't on the original one, but it's just something that I've kind of like wanted to add because, you know, but yeah, so 
here's what the side cores look like. Um, not sure. Here we go. Um, so you can definitely see why you would want the um, like banding that that's put in right here um, because it definitely hides like any stitching that's like sticking out just because of the stay stitching I did to keep all in all the pleats. I think this fabric might have been a bit tad too thick to show off the nice actual pleating. Um, but yeah, so I could iron that and make them a bit more prominent, but not there yet anyway. And then now it is time to attack the neckline here. Um, so like even so now it still is able to button up. I got a tiny ass neck. So we're just going to loop that together and stitch it all the way up. And then I'm going to add a, I'm not going to like stitch here because I'm going to add a, the silk part of the neckline. I decided I'm going to do in silk because this is actually quite scratchy. I should be wearing a, um, under tunic underneath of this, but I didn't feel like putting that on just for a try on. So, cause it'll fit anyway with the under tunic, you know, I still have to choose out my bead color. It's going to have to match this orange as well as the silk, as this is what the silk is going to be. I'm going to use of the silk sari that I used. Unfortunately, I seem to have lost the footage of me putting on this collar, so here you get some footage of me ironing it out. I just did a basic little like piece of rectangle and folded it over after sewing it down and whip stitched it shut. Okay, so I've been rummaging around and uh, part of this has like a tie component slash a bead component and I was like looking in my stuff and I have like a couple glass beads here and some like stones. I forget what like some of these are, like down here I have like a nice chunk of amethyst but I think this is too chunky. I'm not going to be doing a bell um, and these beads so for these ones as well, they don't necessarily like, I think it would be just too busy. So I was thinking maybe this yellow glass bead, cause like it is a glass bead. It's something I can grip and it's not like too chunky compared to these amethysts. So it matches with all the colors. It's not gonna be too busy. And it's something I can definitely like get a grip on to like pump out compared to like this gemstone type thing. And I only have them in green and green would be too much of a uh, contrasting color because like it's a very warm red gold thing. And I just, this yellow would be like a nice contrast. So I think I'm going to go with this yellow. Third time's the charm for this button. For some reason, it just did not want to go on in this one's particular spot, but I got it this time. Um, it was just basic attachment. I did two strings through the hole and tied it down as well as some button loops around the strings holding it down at the back, just for extra strength and security.
If you want to read more in depth about this process here, it's definitely a lot more outlined in the Medieval Tailor's Assistant. But what this basically is, is just gathering some strands of thread to make into a loop. And once you have enough strands, I prefer three, uh, you button stitch them all together so that way it's a substantial loop and you don't have to insert like string or anything like that. You can just all do it with thread. We are on the last legs of the project. I'm just finishing leveling out the hem here, just so I could finish up the hem.
Okay, so I have here what I would normally wear at events. Here's like my linen under tunic, uh, also hand sewn. But let's try on the, uh, the, the new tunic. All right, so here it is. And on it goes. Oh, should undo. Hands are free. Interesting. It's the first time I kind of like made like a side split tunic, so I'm not sure how to like deal with that because I'm just like, maybe the shirt's not meant to be seen because this one is a bit longer. Like I can always pin it up. Basically what we have here, um, you can see it sticking out at the bottom because it's just a bit longer. So I have here on the side split, where you can see all of like the under tunic. So I can definitely pin it up just for like this tunic, but yeah, let's just continue trying it on. It's on, fits quite well. Um, and let's do the little toggle up. Unsure how to fix this kind of weird gapping. It's got a bit weird gapping in here, but I think that's because it's not like up there as well, which is fine. So the tunic and this is the sides. And of course it's not gonna be worn unbelted. So I have my belt here. Okay, hey, uh, wow, sorry about that. My card was full and the camera died just like right at the same time. So we're back to the weird phone setup. I don't even remember what I was talking about, but yeah, definitely um, something's gonna be done with like the tunic, just to either make it shorter or I'll just like wear like a white t-shirt underneath. Um, I think I might have to get used to this button fasten because like, I can definitely undo it easier than before but it's harder for me to do up just from this angle, but it'll come with like time, I guess. But yeah, the collar, I'm glad I chose to do it in the silk because um, it's not as itchy. This wool is kind of itchy. It used to be like a thrift store blanket, but like it's very nice and warm. Like I was just, I'm already enjoying it. I know I'm gonna love it. I'm so happy I felt like I made this. Like it's been on my list to do for like a while now but I'm, I'm glad it's finally done. Um, I just really love doing like all the like, little research. I, I didn't really research like the actual like garment itself. I just kind of like looked at pictures and I was just like, yeah. So this is basically, like the Guthal is basically a regular tunic, right? With the straight body, the gores and like the sleeves. You can do normal sleeves. Like you don't have to do these long sleeves. This is just like my personal edition because I wanted that. But instead of like the triangle gore that goes up, you have the pleated aspect here. Now I didn't like follow the specific pleat outline, but you could totally do that if you wanted to. And then there's like a little bit of slit. Um, I just did, I just held it up to my body where my hip was. And then I was just like, yep, this is a reasonable amount of slittage for me. So there's definitely that. I could do it up more if I wanted to because maybe a bit too open. I know that this garment's pretty high class with my addition of silk, but it just, the this wool is kind of itchy for on the body and I didn't want that touching my neck because I know that would drive me absolutely insane. And um, the cuffs were just like, it, it needs a little, a little something something. And it's a, definitely a little something something. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This is the first time I think I've done that. But yeah, if you ever want any more of my information, I can be found at more down below. So I got TikTok, I got Instagram, and I definitely post more updates on um, like what I've made and stuff definitely on Instagram. But yeah, so super hype about this. I hope you guys enjoyed again, and I'll see you next video. Bye.